Hey y'all, just Icorn here today. I wanted to show off a couple of the new cars that we unlocked as part of our post game and just kind of tie off a couple loose ends. This is a Ryback Firestorm. It's really fast and it looks cool. And since this is a big American car, we're naturally going to make it red, white, and blue. Only seemed right. The Ryback Firestorm is billed by the game as the ultimate drifting car. I'd also like to show off a couple of tracks that we haven't seen in a long time. The game tends to move pretty heavily toward the power plant environment once you've unlocked it, starting with episode 6. Welcome back to Dry Docks. Dry Docks is a pretty great track for the Firestorm. It's very wide and open. So let's do a detonator event with it. That was weird. So yeah, 112 is a little bit better than my personal best. But the Firestorm is an in-game car. It really only makes sense. This is one of my beta runs. So I stop here, and for some reason it still thinks I'm in crash mode, so... I'm not doing anything at this point, by the way. Yeah. I've never seen that bug happen. I think it has to do with me hitting the restart and pause at the exact frame in which I crashed. Let's just move on to a race. We haven't been to Fairy Wharf since about episode 8 when we got the Cobretti Cascade and started doing our detonator event with it. The Firestorm actually handles very similarly to the Cascade in that it's really easy to link drifts with it because it's so well balanced. I also discovered how to do this, for what it's worth on PC. My theory is that because there's no way to know ahead of time what kind of controller it is, the game doesn't know what buttons to load, like graphics-wise. So it just doesn't load one at all. Anyway, for those of you playing with a 360 controller, the button is LB. Now that we're out in front, we can really open up the Firestorm a little bit. It handles much in the same way other cars that are sort of balanced for drifting, namely the Coyote and the Pursuit, handle. 
which is to say that it's got a pretty modest speed and acceleration cap. Believe it or not, the Firestorm is only slightly better than the Cobretti Pursuit in both of those, but when you drift, it actually increases the caps on both of those, like enormously. So coming into the second lap, I've already started out sort of near top speed, and I can increase that top speed further by drifting. If you're trying to go really fast, the best way to do it in the Firestorm is to go for long, shallow drifts. And of course, not to hit any walls, but that's easier said than done. I don't have a lot of experience driving the Firestorm. It's a car I really like, but since Split Second basically has no post game and there's no online anymore, you don't have any impetus to drive it. One other nice thing about the Firestorm compared to the Pursuit and the Coyote is that this car can actually take a hit. The Coyote can too, but at the upper levels, you're normally trading speed for strength. Doing as many drifts as I'm doing here, you might not be quite as fast as you would expect out of the Firestorm. That's okay though, because this is a car you really need to try if you like drifting. It's enormously fun. So I thought I was doing pretty well here, but as it turns out I wasn't. This Hanzo is getting up in my grill. So he does get ahead of me as we go onto the boat. Kind of scrambling to figure out how I'm going to deal with him. But it looks like he was our only real competition anyway, so... Another handy win to put in. Autopilot's really weird in split second. It's most notable actually when you're coming out of the instant replay. If you come out of the instant replay, the game will basically save the speed at which you're going and where you're at on the track and just assume you're going forward or at the angle that you were drifting at if you were drifting. And that doesn't sound like a problem, except when you're coming out of a drift and you need to be turning in to prevent yourself from hitting the wall super hard. This is the other car we unlocked. This is the Elite GT12. It looks really fast because it is. Straight 10 out of 10 in both speed and acceleration and a 1 out of 10 strength, so don't hit anything. This is also the car that Torpedo and Livewire used in the Elite events. We've already done a Detonator event. So let's go on to something a little bit different. We haven't done Air Revenge in a long time. And it's on Port Bridge, too. Look at that big boat. So my personal best on Port Bridge is 123. I think I might be able to beat that. The GT12 is weird. This car has so much power and torque that it actually burns out from stop. It takes a lot of finagling to drive this car effectively, but because it has so much power and torque, this car will drift and link drifts like nothing else in the game. Not even the Firestorm is quite as good at linking drifts back to back, which is not great for going in a straight line because, hey, you can't go in a straight line in anyway most of the time. But it makes it absolutely amazing for air revenge events. The drifting characteristic of the GT12 is also kind of strange. It basically handles like it's a big block of ice. Except after about two seconds when it finally starts drifting like a normal well-behaved car. As long as you initiate your drifts early, you'll have no issues with the car, but it definitely takes some getting used to. I thought I was coming out of that last wave with a full bar so I could just deflect and end it, but I had to wait for the next round. Anyway, 109 is still really good.
I'm gonna miss that exploding bridge. So this is gonna be the last event. This is an elimination event on a track we haven't seen in forever. Welcome back to construction site. The last time we drove this was in episode seven. We were actually in the pursuit, funny enough, doing the detonator event where we got a 105 time. No idea what happened to that guy. The GT-12 has no issues out accelerating everything else in the field. It's going to be a lot harder to handle this in a race event where I'm trying to dodge explosions than in an air event, event where I can sort of kind of expect where the missiles are going to land. Don't expect to go anywhere in a straight line in this car. You have to win by being a better driver, but in the GT12, that normally just means knowing how to drift it. And because it has a 1 out of 10 in strength, everything can bully it around. Track knowledge is pretty critical in the GT12. And just knowing how to work with the weight, which of course is very low because this is a Le Mans prototype. If you can handle the weight and you know how it will drift, you can do things like that where you can scoot around things that would otherwise surely wreck you. Talking of which, I have no idea how I didn't get wrecked out by that. So we're into lap two. We've already outlasted two people. But things are going to get kind of weird. Last is not a good place to be in elimination. Fortunately, we're starting to build up a healthy lead here. That guy was giving us a little bit of competition, but he wrecked into the bridge, so it's pretty much smooth sailing from here. So I lost so much speed out of just that small nudge that I couldn't initiate another drift. But it's okay, because we can just throw some taxis at him and everything is alright. This car really does not do bumps. I'm actually pretty worried that this guy is going to overtake me because I bottomed out. but we just stick to the original plan and it's all right. Not bad for a day's work. Anyway, thanks for joining me. I hope you've had a great time.